This tool allows you to change the facial expressions of any image or character you upload or generate with Design AI. It's a really powerful tool and does a pretty good job, but there's also a few different things you want to do to make sure you get the most out of it. Now to show you how it works, I'm going to use this image right here, which I generated in the Design Editor using Flux over here. Now what I need to do is simply click on the image, I head over to Face Kit, and there's expression edit. Keeping in mind, there's also face repair and face swap, which I cover in my full design workshop video. But otherwise, we're gonna to go to expression edit and you can choose an image on the canvas or even upload an image to use. I'm going to choose. You can see here we have a preview up the top and also we can see our image over here on the right. It's gonna zoom in on a few parts of this video. Then you see over here, we have eye openness. Now, for starters, if I bring this all the way down to closed, I'm gonna leave the edit time on and you'll see it takes a couple of seconds to make this adjustment and then it'll show that difference. So I'm gonna edit out those wait times while we go through this video. But if I don't want the eyes to be as closed, I can bring it to about halfway and have her eyes sort of slightly closed. Or it doesn't do as good of a job, but I can make them wide open and just sort of stretch the pupils a little bit, but it does create a, a pretty funny looking image. So I'm gonna actually just leave those down here, slightly closed. What I think is really cool is that if you have the eye gaze, you can move it to the left. So she's looking to the left or to the right and pick how far to the right she wants to look and then even go vertical. So we can have her looking down or looking upward. So this is just the eyes so far, but you get full control over every part of the face. And again, we have the eyebrows. So again, we're looking in that eye area so I can have a lower, she looks a little bit more concerned or higher, where she looks a little bit more sort of dazed. So I'm gonna go with a little bit lower. So I think that looks a little more natural. And of course, with the wink, we can have her winking completely. So she has one eye closed and one eye open. So that's pretty handy. So you've got a, a few different settings here you can play with. We've basically got almost no wink here. Now her mouth is already closed here, but if I really crank that down to closed, it basically almost removes the mouth. I'm gonna scroll down, bring it up to open, and it opens up the mouth a little bit. Now we do have some expressions here. So at the moment, I believe it's detected certain levels. So I've got smile, I can have that all up to laugh. Kind of looks like she's laughing. Roundness, so this is sort of how round of her mouth is, so how open it is. If I bring that wide open, her mouth is open. But I can reset these, give her a grin, even Bring the lip openness down a bit. <laughs> the grin looks a little bit funny. So bring that smile up to match it. And that's pretty cool. So you can see how we've managed to change the face a fair bit there. There's also now things such as the head pitch. So this is sort of the direction the head goes in. So at the moment, we can have her looking up, looking down, or anywhere in between. And then of course, have her tilting to the left or turning to the left, I should say. So she's turning to the left here or turning to the right. So it does a pretty good job of it. It's not quite as sharp as the original, but it still, I think, looks pretty solid in regard to how the expression is placed. Now, of course, there's also a head roll, so I can have her tilting her head to one side or tilting to the other. So she's kind of looking completely off to one direction. Now we've completely changed that expression. I can now place that expression on canvas. If I go to my layers, you can see we go from looking across to straight ahead. But like I said, it's not quite as sharp, but clicking on this image, if it's a little bit fuzzy, I can go enhance and upscale over here. I've got the image selected and go with portrait. I do want a bit of creativity. I hit generate and now I have my upscaled image, which looks a bit sharper. I can place that on canvas. And that's looking a bit better. So now switching between the two, we've got a little bit of movement. But what's also really cool about this, if I head over to AI video over here, we have things like start frame and end frame on certain models. So if I've got cling here, I have a start frame, click this. I can turn on my end frame and click another image. Now it's not here at the moment, so what I need to do is turn that on and now I can select it. So I'll just give this image a prompt saying, a woman turns and looks to one side. So this can be a handy tool for taking video, so from a start frame to an end frame and have her turn and look from one side to the other. I'll bring the imagination up a little bit, just make it a simple five second video, hit generate, we get this video here, which actually kind of looks around a little bit, but then comes back and lands on that gaze. So even though I didn't expect the turn, it still created a pretty nifty video, being able to go from one frame to another and being able to change the expression of a character we generated with AI. But there's yet another layer here that we can use. If I click on this image, I go up the top expression, so it's just above here as well. And the tool will still appear. 
is if I want to make a slight adjustment. I go through and change that facial expression further from what I originally set up. From there, I can go back into my AI video. For the start frame, I choose the one we ended with. And for the end frame, I choose the expression we just created. I'm just gonna say, woman laughs, hit generate. And now I've created this continuation from the last video where the expression and the motion changes. But then add it to the end of the first video and you can get a nice little sort of compilation where she looks around, comes back, and we get the second expression where she's laughing. So you can use this as a way of stringing video generations together to kind of like set a scene or just sort of have a bit more control over the video output. And this has all been done right within the Design AI interface. Now this does work in a lot of instances. There are certain things like animal faces or even faces like this one where it doesn't work. For instance, I go to my face kit, go to expression edit, click on the image and no face is detected. But that doesn't mean you can't try it on some of your other more cartoony characters. For instance, I have this image here of two characters. If I come to face kit, expression edit, click on this image, I can actually choose which face I wanna edit. So I can go into say this one here first, make some edits and have him looking in another direction. I can then place that on canvas, do the same process again, choose this face, and then I can edit multiple faces within a single image and even get some pretty silly results. We then use Upscale and Enhance just to clean up the details and fix up the blurriness. What I also like here is some of the other possibilities. For instance, if I go text to image, find, find a solid model that looks very cinematic. It's like design cinematic. I, prop, I could prop for something like this Cyberpunk Warrior, go to Prompt Improver. I can either use Face Match and upload a face. Choosing this picture of me. I can generate, add this image to canvas of me, which looks completely ridiculous. Keeping in mind, you can go to face kit, upload any image and face swap or face repair. But I can now come in to this image over here, go to expression. And if I look a little too friendly, I can decide to change that face expression. I can do duck lips and have a little bit of fun with that image. And now we have this ridiculous looking version of me in a cyberpunk future looking much more built than I currently am. Now you may have noticed that last image my facial expression changed just a little bit. So coming back to our original face is when you're upscaling, there's a few things you need to know. I've got this image here. If I go to upscale and enhance and I go to portrait, but when I generate that, I get a pretty decent upscale which stays true to the original. However, if I come back to the enhance, go to default, I've tried balance and detail, but it tends to change the image a little bit. And when I generate with that one, I get this crazy looking image. So it doesn't stick to the original image when you're upscaling, but could have an unintended facial expression change effect if you wanted to create something where someone looked a little bit crazy. But getting away from youth or cartoons, I tried to go with someone old and I generated this image using Flux and I was able to successfully get a few different facial expressions using him. Now this tool isn't always perfect. It does have a few issues from time to time. You can either adjust them out when you're using the tool or say in this instance, the teeth are a bit funny and the upscale will quite often fix things. But in this instance, it's kind of messed the teeth up a little bit further. So that's when we need to rely on some of the other face tools to kind of repair this stuff. So I've come over here to face kit. I go up to face repair, use whatever I think I'm gonna use this brush here. I'm just gonna highlight, bring that size down and just sort of highlight this teeth area here, which looks a bit funny. So I can actually repair this part of the image. I can come in and type bottom teeth, straight and healthy. And if I turn the similarity up, we'll get something that's actually quite similar to what's already there, but I'm gonna keep it down because we really need a lot, a lot of work done to change this. So I'm gonna keep it, uh, I'll keep it at similar and test that out. Hit generate. And now we have some results and the teeth are looking just a little bit strange, not quite what we're after. So I'm gonna come back from similar and go all the way down to none to try and give it a lot more freedom to generate some better looking teeth. So it's important sometimes to make these adjustments. Hit generate again. You can see we get one that looks a little bit better. Now his teeth probably wouldn't be that clean, so they do look a bit funny, but they do look accurate at least. But convert it to a video and even he thinks they look a bit silly, showing them off and then kind of laughing afterwards. So I thought that was a pretty nice generation to end off that particular image. 
So this is a very powerful tool for creating a series of images with different expressions. It could be used for character training. It is also definitely need to enhance and upscale that final result if you want things to be nice and sharp. And if you're using cartoon characters, you can experiment with some of those more creative settings. Otherwise, this is great for creating videos. I still reckon if you have any issues, go in there, use the face repair tool. And amongst all those different little tools, you can definitely create some really compelling images and even convert them into great AI videos. So that is the video for today, guys. Check out Design AI if you want to have a go at this. There's a link in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, that's the video. See you again next time. Have a great day.